Hello, hello. As always, good morning, good afternoon, or good night, wherever you are. If you're a dev, it doesn't really matter anyway. Uh, we've got some interesting stuff to get into today, but before we do, make sure to join the Antelope Developers Chat if you're a dev at t.me forward slash Antelope Devs. Uh, we hold a bi-weekly developer roundtable, which has had some excellent conversations recently. And if you're not there, you truly are missing out. Don't forget to subscribe and like the stream to help the algorithm. Uh, without further ado, let's dive in. Leap has a new name dropped for the consensus algorithm for Antelope, and it is Savannah. It is an acronym or a backronym that stands for a scalable agreement on validated additions with nimble non-repudiating attestation. Excellent, mouthful. Uh, we won't actually get into what that means. You might not understand what those words mean yet, but fret not, there is an academic paper coming out that will dive very deeply into depth. Um, we have a timeline which is released for 6.0 as well now. July 10th is the target for the final release. July 11th to the 30th is the recommended upgrade period for all nodes. And July 31st is the hard fork date. Moving on to EVM, we have some new tokens added to the bridge. We have SFN art and SFN inscriptions. You can bridge them over at bridge.evm.eosnetwork.com along with USDT, MLNK, Chex, Zeos, BRAM, SEOS, Box, USN, and of course, everyone's favorite, Banana. On tooling, there's a couple of different updates. We have Fuck Yeah and the Web IDE. Uh, Multi-contract support is now available. You can have multiple contracts inside of your projects. You can also now use the standard C++ header style contracts instead of only single file contracts, which is what was supported before. Um, there's a couple different ways to go about this. There's uh, some nice little helpers there in the contract, which you get as a template. The Web IDE just dropped today a couple hours ago, also has new logins with Google and GitHub, so you can save all of the projects uh, that you've been working on. You're no longer lost trying to find them or trying to bookmark them like a madman in 1997. For RAM, uh, we have some new actions which are, are already available on Jungle and will be coming to mainnet very soon. These are some things that probably should have been done a while ago. Very glad that they're done now. We have the ability to transfer without uh, suffering any kind of fees. You can now have a, you have a direct burn action which you can compose on top of. You can buy for yourself, which alleviates some problems that we've had with trying to set up keys, session keys, to be able to sign on web applications uh, without having to go to wallets every time. And you have some composable inline logs, which help you to make other contracts on top of RAM uh, using the deltas of uh, the output. So let's say you buy RAM with EOS, you now have a way to also listen for an action that has the amount of RAM that was actually bought for the EOS, uh, and also the same for selling, so you, you can actually have that data. It's big hassle that we've suffered through for years, and I'm really happy to see that it's no longer a problem. Um, you can test all of the new actions out at ramutils, that's R-A-M-U-T-I-L-S dot netlify dot app. Uh, this is just a temporary application so we can test this stuff out on the jungle testnet. The Antelope Firewall. Uh, so the boy team have been working on this for a while. It aims to help alleviate spam on the network and add a gate in front of nodes which provides a rate limiter, firewall, and a load balancer aimed specifically at leap nodes. So this isn't like uh, putting an Nginx reverse proxy on this or a proxy or something like that. This is a specifically tailored software, which is meant only for leap. Uh, I was actually one of the reviewers on this for the grant and I had the chance to play around with it. It's very cool. I can immediately see how it's useful and uh, will be used by node operators. Uh, and this, I guess, isn't only for BPs. I'm talking about node operators in general. CPU, memory, and disk performance. There was a great article written by Ross from Eosphere uh, who talked about the improvements in Leap 5.0. There's some real life data taken from their own nodes. It's a really good read and a good way to get a view into just a tiny part of what it takes to run a BP. Uh, so even if you're not a developer, though it is a little technically dense, it is a really good way for you to understand some of the larger picture of what block producers have to go through. Now, last episode, I put forth a decently sized developer challenge, and luckily for you viewers today, uh, it hasn't been completed yet. So let's see what the challenges are again and what you can do to earn up to 1,000 EOS. 
It is time again for developer challenges. On the last episode, you had an opportunity to build a two don't app or a Tamagotchi dap for 200 EOS each, one for EOS native and one for EOS EVM. We got a ton of submissions, but only the two that did it properly first actually won the prizes. Today, I have another set of challenges. It's a little bit of a higher prize pool this time. Number one, history node guide. We have a new guide to set up a Nodios API, and we have guides for the various configuration options like peering and plugins. What we don't have is a guide for apps that need a history solution of their own. There are public history solutions available, but if you need your own, it's a hard journey right now. To solve that problem, I'm offering up a thousand EOS to whoever creates the best history guide by the next episode. That's right, this isn't first come first serve. Take your time and do your best work. Your guide will also live inside of the official EOS documentation with your name as the author and a link to your GitHub. Number two, build a seeds app. A small group of us blockchain mad scientists have been toying around with this concept of seeds. It's an innovative way to load up arbitrary data onto the blockchain that can be used as a source for other types of applications like games. One of the biggest problems we usually face is that the price of putting that kind of data on the blockchain is expensive and then completely wasted when one of those games either gets abandoned or is just over. This system helps alleviate those core problems while also adding additional functionality like the transfer of ownership of those assets and API-like composability. The technology is still in beta and desperately needs some testing. So to kickstart the ecosystem, I'm offering up 200 EOS to three developers who are willing to create projects on top of Seeds and provide quality feedback. Follow the first link on the screen to join the Seeds Telegram chat and the second link on the screen to join the Antelope developers chat if you want to reach out about the history guide. Until next time, happy building.